What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. Before we jump into the standard list, I just want to mention I know we did not get videos up on Thursday and Friday of last week. Uh, unfortunately, due to a series of unfortunate events, I was uh, swamped with not only work, but like things to do around the house and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and so unfortunately, because it's just kind of the busy season for me, I did not get quite as much recorded as I would have liked. So I do apologize. I know we didn't get anything up, but we're jumping back in full force this week uh, with kind of an old classic. It's mono blue aggro in standard. Uh, now, just a heads up, obviously a lot of Zendikar Rising stuff is going to affect things. We're going to have a lot of new stuff out at the end of the week. Uh, this is one of those decks that I want to see how it kind of works. We're not necessarily getting a ton for it, but I just want to see uh, what's a benchmark good, you know, kind of mono blue list. And I think that this one is a very tuned version of the list as we'll go through. So uh, obviously this is very much a flash instant speed based deck. So a lot of this list can be played on the opponent's turn. Uh, uh, in fact, there are only really a couple cards that can't be, uh, and that really is a huge asset for this deck uh, because you can you can essentially just wait and see what happens and then always make the most optimal play. Uh, and that's what makes this list so great is that you can kind of lean on that no matter what. Uh, now, that being said, we do have things like Stone Coil Serpent in this list, which obviously is not an instant speed spell, but makes for a very good scalable aggro card uh, that has pseudo protection and reach, which is really, really nice. So lots of really nice things there. In terms of creatures, what we've got, uh, aside from Stone Coil Serpent, we've got the four Spectral Sailors. Pretty clear, obvious card. It's a nice, easy flash uh, creature on turn one that then later on can draw you some cards and just poke through for a little bit of damage. We have the Brine Board Cutthroat. Uh, this card really capitalizes when you're playing a lot of things on the opponent's turn. This just gets stronger and stronger every single time. Uh, absolutely fantastic card. Uh, we do have Brazen Borrower as a 4 of as well. Not only a good tempo swing to kind of bounce something, but also a very nice 3-point threat uh, in the air. Now, it can't necessarily block everything, but it is a really nice threat. Uh, sea Dasher Octopus, a fantastic instant speed way to draw yourself a card if you know you're going to be getting in for some damage. Uh, and also just a nice little threat that you can flash out if you happen to have the mana. Uh, and then finally at the top end, three Pouncing Shore Shark. Now this is uh, a relatively newer card from Ikoria. We've played this card before, but it's really, really nice. For four mana, you can mutate this onto something at instant speed uh, and then be able to bounce an opponent's creature. Uh, what's nice about this too is if you play a Pouncing Shore Shark for flash and then play and then mutate onto it, you get double activations off of it. Uh, I have had in play testing that, that scenario come up where you can really, really start to swing the game in your favor by only playing one card. Uh, so as you can see, a very nice flash creature package for the most part, aside from that Stone Coil Serpent. Now, in terms of the spells of this deck, this is really where we've gotten to fine tune this list over time. Again, this is a very classic list. We've seen this for a while, so it's nice to be able to kind of see a fine tuned version. So we have a one of Miscast. Now, this is a very interesting spell. It's a one mana counter spell for instance and sorceries only, unless the controller pays three. Three is a pretty high cost, uh, especially in the early turns of the game, which we're obviously trying to stick to. Uh, and so this can really, really get somebody for very, very cheap. Unsummon as a two of, again, very nice little tempo play. You can kind of scale this in after playing maybe on three, maybe playing a C dash or octopus flashing, muta mutating that out onto something and then be able to unsummon on the, uh, on the opponent's creature. Fantastic little play. Negate as a two of here. Dealing with a lot of these control decks and a lot of these heavy planeswalker decks, especially things like Sultai, uh, are really, really nice to have negates in here because it gives us an opportunity to just straight up deal with it, counter it, not even have to worry about it. Uh, unsubstantiate, another really nice card, a great tempo play. We do have three of them here, uh, and it's just, again, a really solid way to tempo out. Essence Capture is a great thing because not only is it a creature counter, but it gives a 1-1 counter to a creature we control. Uh, and if that creature happens to be a Brineborn Cutthroat and they're playing the creature on their turn, uh, it actually gets two 1-1 counters. So a lot of really nice stuff there. And then finally, three Mystical Dispute. This is a great counter spell, especially against blue decks because it cheapens itself, but it's just a nice little conditional, conditional counter uh, that the opponent has to pay three for or they don't get their spell. And what's nice about this is, again, we're the aggro deck. We're trying to win very, very quickly. Uh, and so this helps us get there. 
We do have 21 islands, we have two Castle Vantress, and then a single Blast Zone, which I have found very, very useful in quite a lot of matchups. So, that's the deck. That's what we're looking at. Again, very nice little uh, tuned take on a very classic list, so I'm excited to see how this does. In playtesting, I played four or five games, uh, and we had a decent, you know, two to three win uh, kind of rate here, and so I'm excited to see. Hopefully, we can at least get a few with it, uh, despite hope probably quite a number of misplays on my end, uh, but we will do the best we can. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this just a hair. All right, uh, do we keep this hand? It's a little bit slow, uh, but the Brazen Borrower is actually a bit nice. Um, mm -mm -mm. I'm going to say yes, uh, because this is a Yorian deck. I kind of want to see how this goes, but uh, this is not necessarily a very strong early uh, keep, only because we don't have anything like a, an early game threat to really push out there. Um, so let's... Uh, oops. Uh, okay, sure. I'm gonna turn my uh, my volume up just a hair. Sorry if that was really loud. All right, they take the octopus, makes a lot of sense, perfectly fine. Uh, again, another great reason not to go down on resources against a deck like this is that uh, Thought Erasure is a very common card in these kind of control lists. Uh, and so you don't really want to go down on resources when you know you're probably gonna be going down on resources already. Uh, we'll go ahead and flash out this sailor. Chances are they're going to have some removal spells here, uh, which is perfectly fine. Uh, whoops, meant to attack, but that's fine. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Um, okay. Uh, they did not Thought Erasure last turn, so I'm not expecting they've got one here. Um, sure. Let them scry here, that's fine. Uh, and here we're going to be sh uh, flashing out this this cutthroat, I believe, um, and just see what happens. This is not necessarily a great bounce target, uh, if I'm honest, but uh, we'll see what we need to do. Let's go ahead and attack in. Uh, and again, I'm actually going to wait on this shore shark. I'm going to see what they decide to do first. Uh, normally, it'd be great to just go ahead, bounce this, swing in for a nice four damage on that. But we're going to kind of slow things down just a bit uh, to make sure that we're getting the right target because it's very easily uh, a kill spell coming next turn, and I don't particularly want to lose that. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead. Let's flash this out. My guess is they're going to kill this in response, uh, which is fine, but that's just my guess. Uh, we obviously want to go over. And we get to bounce this Charming Prince. Now, again, this isn't a great bounce target, but it is one that uh, they can't necessarily do anything about at this point, clearly, which is great. Um, okay. That's fine. That is perfectly fine. Uh, so here we're in a position where we could do this uh, on really either one of these, but probably just this, and then bounce one of these guys. And then, of course, we've got an Unsummon as well. Um... Do we want to take the super aggro play on the camp that uh, they may not have a... Uh, I don't love that, to be honest. Um, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and attack in. I don't love the idea of committing too much, given that this is an Esper control list. Chances are they're going to have some kind of, uh, of sweeper here. And so I really want to be kind of careful there. Um, and we'll wait again. We can react in response to whatever they're going to do. So we might need to just draw a card here. We might need to bounce something. We can, we can figure that out as we go. Um, and that is the strength of this deck, which I love so much. Also, I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Um, interesting. So we can't actually just bounce this back, uh, which isn't actually terrible. Do I care enough, though? Let's just see what happens here. I'm going to draw. Just kind of refill our hand here. And now we've just got quite a lot of things that we can do. Uh, and so in response to a sweeper, which again, I would have thought they would have done that turn. Um, but maybe not. Uh, we, we have quite a lot we can do. Uh, let's do this here, though. Going to put that over, obviously. We're going to bounce that, and then we get to attack in. 
All right. Uh, yep, end the turn. Uh, I like that proactive play there. I think that makes a bit more sense. And here we can flash out the cutthroat, uh, but we're going to do it in reaction to whatever they do because, again, they may just have another Elspeth Conquers Death, in which case they get this, then we get cutthroat out. We'll, we'll see. Um, I like our chances here a little bit, though. Uh, we're playing very carefully, which I think is correct. Okay. Sure. Got us there. Uh, but again, that's fine. We've got the cutthroat. Gonna wait to see how they scry here, but obviously we're just gonna be flashing this out. Two to the top. Wow. Okay. That's a little scary, not gonna lie. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to take the chance here. Let's do this. Again, trying to be a bit more aggressive at this stage because they haven't really done um, as much as I would have thought against what we've been doing. Thankfully, they didn't have anything excessive in the graveyard either. So, uh, unfortunately, Brazen Borrower does not hit this, so we can't play the same trick that we did with the Unsummon where we kind of saved our own stuff. Um, but we, we can figure out what they're going to do and maybe try and deal with that sure and here it might just be correct to to just flash this out as a uh, as a threat here uh, let's see if we do that they do have a Yorian yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna flash this out I think I was kind of hoping to draw some spell there to be honest but uh, that's okay we need to keep the damage race going, uh, and if they put Yorian in their hand, chances are they're just going to be playing it this turn for a little value off of this Omen. We'll see, uh, but... Nice. Yep. So they're gonna get, they, they get their two 1-1s, one which is good, um, and some life. Unsubstantiate. That's quite good. Do we just bounce the Yorian, or is that even really good, is my question. I kind of just don't think that's good, right? Like, that seems kind of terrible. Um, let's attack here and see what they do. Chances are, yeah, okay, perfect. That's fine. So we just get to hold this back, and now we can unsubstantiate on the end of their turn. Um potentially get a little bit more value out of this we'll see uh i don't love this uh, this matchup it's a little tough because they're kind of wanting us to to bounce a lot of things uh which makes it a little tricky uh when that's most of your deck but that's okay that's an expected matchup so i think it makes sense that that's a thing interesting okay I assume they just hit the Brazen Borrower. So we get to do this. We'll resolve that. All right. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ooh, that is great, actually. Um, let's do this. Let's go ahead and get rid of that Narset, because that's going to be a problem. Um, and so now we can counter the Yorian on the way back down, which I assume they're going to try and play here. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that changes. Th oh, man. <laughs> well, that kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> sure, you can have that. Uh, I wish we had had this and not the Essence Capture now, uh, just so we could have actually dealt with that Shatter, but it is what it is. We, we deal with it as we go. Now we just need a threat, though. Um, unfortunately, we're just lacking on that front, so hopefully we can get there. 
Not helping us there. Uh, if the Yorian comes down, we do Essence Capture regardless, uh, because that's good enough to, to need to. We obviously just counter this, uh, because chances are they would take the Essence Capture. Oh, wow. They're really going to just counter. Uh, that kind of does what we needed it to do anyway, because it just means that they can't play Yorian this turn. Uh, but I do think that was correct to counter. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we wait till the end of their turn. Um, but chances are we just, you know, obviously we're just gonna <laughs> scry here and hopefully we can get something. Um, we've got plenty of land. We have drawn quite a number of land, uh, which is not good. Let's go ahead and scry. Not helpful, not helpful. Um, it's kind of bad when we have more land than the control deck. Just seems wrong. Uh, and here, they're just going to get tons of value. Uh, depending on what we draw here, it might be worth it for us just to save the time and not uh, and, and concede. We have not necessarily lost the game, but very soon we will. Uh, they're dealing three here, gaining three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Well, it's our best bet. I mean, it's a good top deck. That's about as good as we could have hoped for, so now we just have to hope they can't kill it. <laughs> um, but wow, uh, this is a, a very interesting matchup. I'm a little bit surprised we've lasted as long as we have, only because this is usually a very like removal-heavy deck. Um, granted, it's a Yorian version, and so there's 80 cards that they have to go through, um, but they usually have a little bit more. We have dealt with, what, two sweepers, I believe? Uh, yeah. Oh, there, yeah. There it goes, yep. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can do it again. Um, I think it's just Stone Coil, Serpent, or Bust, right? Like, we just kind of have to have it. Uh, yeah, let's resolve. Not good enough. Um, the Shore Shark is fine, but it's not good enough. <laughs> okay, well, we just wait. Uh, I mean, good news is we can flash this out and it draws us cards, but, uh, again, we're in pretty bad shape here. They just get to hit for four. Um... All right. Sure. I'm surprised we're hanging in there, but we are uh, not doing so well. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call that because they're about to deal three more to us. Yeah. All right. Well, we didn't get there in the first game, uh, despite a very valiant effort, I will say. Uh, so let's see if we can make it happen. Uh, we've got two more games in this video, obviously, and then we'll. We'll jump into a separate set of three, and then we'll kind of summarize how we're doing in the meta with this deck. Uh, do, did we misplay that game is kind of my biggest question. I think probably somewhere along the way we definitely did, but uh, I think we actually played the deck to a pretty decent outcome, despite not winning the game. I think we held our own, which I'm very happy with, uh, against a deck like Esper Control. So I'm pretty okay with that. Ooh. <laughs> Well, we can't keep that. Uh, this we will keep. Um, and I'm going to put the unsubstantiate back. I believe that's the correct play. Um, there's a world where we just play Stone Coil Serpent turn one. So we can C dash our octopus on it. I think I'm going to do that. Uh, I know that sounds a little odd, but we're going to need to draw a lot of cards here, so I'm going to lean into it and see if that works. If it doesn't, this is a high-risk, high-reward kind of play, uh, so we really have to hope we can get there. <laughs> sure. No blocks. Uh, yep. This does get us out of uh, shock range, which is kind of nice. And draws us a card. Perfect. Okay. I'm happy with that. Um, we are going to need to uh, deal with these creatures pretty quickly here, though. Interesting. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, 
Gonna attack in. I'm just gonna unsummon. Uh, yeah. And again, we don't have to force anything. We just kind of get to either play out two Spectral Sailors or just kind of wait and see what's going to happen and negate if we need to. But um, this gives us so many options. It's great. Uh, yeah, we'll take the one. Play out a Spectral Sailor. Technically, we should have waited, uh, but it's fine. We'll go ahead and do this now. All right. Um, I do think we attack with everything here. Uh, they do get to kill the octopus, but we do still deal trample damage here. Um, and so we will at least get to draw a card. And uh, we, of course, have just card draw on these spectral sailors as well, which is quite useful. Yes. I'm going to negate that. Uh, and we wait. So the thing that we need to save this negate for, though, is very clearly like an Embercleave. Um, that's going to be a big, big swing if they can get that down. And so we don't want that. Um, but we're emptying our hand. And so like this, uh, in this instance, like the Robber of the Rich doesn't really do anything, which is nice. Still dealing a decent amount of damage per turn. I mean, we are outpacing a mono red deck, which is pretty nice. Uh, not super surprising, given that we have counter spells, but, you know. I will go ahead and counter that. Just to keep the damage mitigated as much as possible. Sea Dash or Octopus. Great. Um... Let's go ahead and flash this on. Go over. Now dealing four damage. So we do have lethal next turn and we're drawing an extra card. Fantastic. All right. And we have a negate up. So I feel okay. Uh, especially since all of our creatures have flying. <laughs> uh, that makes it a little easier. Um, yep. There we go. We outpaced mono red. Uh, that feels really, really nice. Um, I do think mono red is a nice matchup for us generally. Just because uh, we have flyers and they don't. Um, granted, they've got shocks and things like that, but we've got so much, uh, just kind of like, you no, know, you know, permission spells, negates, things like that, that, uh, I think we can generally do pretty well against them. Uh, we also draw cards where they don't necessarily draw cards. They can light up the stage and that's about the best they can do. Um, so I feel pretty good about that. Um, this is interesting. So... Let's consider matchups. If we're against Mono Red, we can bounce and then play this for maybe three, uh, which would pace ourselves above a lot of what they're going to do and then be on turn four pouncing. Uh, if we're not against that, control. I don't love it against a, some matchups, but I do love it against some, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. Uh, again, we're learning a little bit as well. I have played these Mono Blue decks before, uh, but it's been quite a while. Uh, that's nice. I think with that given, we'll, we'll shoot for the same play as we did last time, which is to play this out and then play the octopus on top of it uh, to start that card draw. And then uh, hopefully we can manage to stay, stay alive here. Adventures. Okay. Uh, that's very, very good, unfortunately. Um, oops. All right, so the question is, do we attack in? Um, part of me says yes, and part of me doesn't, which is kind of interesting because chances of them having removal is very high. Uh, chances of it being Heartless Act or Eliminate. Um, let's take a chance. Let's say no attacks. If they've got Heartless Act, then it doesn't actually work. Uh, if they've got pretty much anything else, it does. So... <laughs> This is a bit of a risky play, but we're going to try. And it looks like they don't have it, which is good. Um, I think they take the borrower. 
I think that's probably the right play. The Shore Shark is also very good, but we're also a turn away from it. Um, and the, the two bounce spells are helpful here because they do get rid of these things, at least for a turn. Okay, took the Shore Shark. Uh, let's play Castle Vantress. Uh, let's go ahead and bounce this. Gonna go ahead and attack in here. Uh, yeah. Draw our card. Okay, well, we got a short shark anyway. Uh, now, worth noting, they do get to draw a card if they just play this out again. Uh, an extra card, which is not necessarily ideal, but we know what our deck is gonna do. It's gonna try and bounce stuff, so that's what we're gonna have to lean into. Uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I think that's the best we can hope for. Um, yeah, actually, we do bounce this. Just so it doesn't trigger. Um, and then, of course, we have Pouncing Shore Shark to bounce this again. So, ooh, wow, we are uh, really getting lucky with these Shore Sharks here. Uh, we'll go over. Bounce. Attack in. And draw another card. Um, worth noting, we're gonna suffer very greatly when they kill this. <laughs> um, but, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. Here's, a, this is gonna be a really nice turn for them because they will get a 2-2 off of this. Um, but again, they've been trying this, they tried this play essentially, they've done the same thing for like three turns. Um, and now we've got a, essentially a double pouncing shore shark, which is very nice. Uh, and I will go ahead and do this here. It doesn't truly matter, but um, we are pretty overcommittal on this, but. Uh, and I'm going to bounce both of these. This kills that token. They can just replay this. Um... All right. And we attack in. We'll see what we draw here. All right. They save themselves a couple of damage, but uh, obviously losing that, and we still get to draw a card, which is so nice. Uh, I love the fact that Stone Coil Serpent gives Trample, uh, or has Trample, even with this Mutate. It's so good. Uh, okay, and so now we get to flash this in at the end of the turn, um, which is, I think, going to be pretty good, given that we can just now start bouncing some things. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that that works. Um that does feel pretty bad, but it is what it is. Sure. Go ahead and flash this out now. All right. Okay, so I think we just end the turn now. Um, we can start flashing out these Brazen Borrowers, which is kind of nice. Uh, sure. One thing that kind of sucks is this gets them out of out of range a little here. Um, uh, or does it, actually? Technically, no. If we can just flash both of these out, and they can't deal with either of them. I'm going to negate that. Um, it's not a huge play by any means, but uh, it does keep them off of, off of killing us with that. Um... Let's do this, just flash it out. Oh, nice, okay, sure. They would have gotten us with that either way though, so that's fine. Um, gonna go ahead and bounce that. I'm just kind of playing things out. Technically, I should have been waiting until their turn, 100%. Um, so that's not technically correct, because now they can just kind of do whatever they want with us, and we can't do any, like, response stuff. But, um, you know, we'll see. They, they've they used two Eliminates. They've also got their Murderous Rider out, so hopefully they don't have too much more. This is, uh, ooh, that's bad. That's really bad. Uh, just so they can gain life, that's really terrible. 
Uh, we do get to draw some cards here, which will be nice. But so do they. I don't think we block. Blasson. Let's activate. <laughs> uh... Hmm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, but then they can eat plenty of things, so we do have to leave a blocker back. Let's do this. Um, definitely not in good shape here, though. Uh, if we hit for two, we get rid of... Oh, man. Yeah. I think they just win then, right? Because we can't block that. Yeah, they got it. All right, well, well done, opponent. Uh, unfortunately, only getting one win with this kind of classic mono blue list, but um, I think some of that's misplaying on my end, but also I think some of that is just the meta has changed. Uh, we did pull this list from a like competitive uh, match, and I, I'm sorry, I don't recall which one, but uh, the point is it's kind of interesting to see how meta shifts and how decks shift and how important and how potent they can be. Uh, this was obviously a very popular list pretty early on in this standard environment, but things have changed. We've adapted. We've gotten more powerful decks. I still think this one's very good, and I'm interested to see how we do in the second set of games. Hopefully we can get a few more wins, but uh, I do think that this is a pretty e interesting testament to just the shift of the meta, and I think um, we'll see how it does also with Zendikar Rising coming out. Uh, but I really like the deck still, and I think it's worth actually trying out still. So uh, we'll do another game, we'll, or another uh, subset of games, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see you very soon. So thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it, and I will see you very soon.